Here we are in the NBA Finals between the Milwaukee Bucks and the fucking Phoenix Suns. And I don't think there is a sane human being on this planet that predicted that this would happen this year, with the exception of one guy. One guy, some dude named Jarrett Plummer. Literally, his last name is P L A H M E R. Sorry, bro, you got an unfortunate last name. Yeah. But hey, it's an impressive uh, prediction. But he also said the Bucks would be winning in seven games, which is probably incorrect. But hey, you know, impressive so, prediction. So did he predict? What year did he predict that they this te- these teams would be in the finals together? It was a tweet that was posted in 2016. That's wild. That's yeah. wild. So maybe as Time a crystal traveler. ball. Dude, that's like saying that Lions and Jets are going to play in the Super Bowl he's, in 2026. Marty McFly. He's <laughs> going back to the future. <laughs> Literally. All right. Uh, so let's talk about game one because game one was definitely fun to watch, but not if you're a Bucks fan because uh, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton did whatever the hell they wanted to. Uh, Justin, do you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, honestly, I think if you were the... Uh, a f- like a uh, Milwaukee fan, you were actually pretty confident going into this game. Going into this game without Giannis, I think kind of makes you like think, okay, like, you know, he's a two-time MVP. Based on how they played when Giannis went down the last series. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you're like, hey, man, he's a two-time MVP. Like the second we get him back, everything's going to change, right? And don't get me wrong, Giannis has played well. Like he hasn't played terribly. Like the first game, it was, you know, he had 20 points. He only played 35 minutes in a game that he should have played 45. Yeah, we'll Um, just talk about game one for right now because, yeah, yeah, because game two is obviously a lot different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he had 17 boards, four steals, or sorry, four assists, two steals. He had a good game. And then Chris Middleton dropped 29, had seven boards. And then this is where the drop-off is. So, like, the player that they needed... And I and I told you this before the series too. I remember I remember telling you like they they this is going to be the biggest thing is if Drew Holiday can keep up averaging like twenty points a game, you know, over the last ten uh, playoff games, if he can keep that going. And yesterday, um, unfortunately, Drew Holiday three shot for twelve. <laughs> two three for twelve, dude. I think it was even. It might have been. Was it even that good? Like it was bad. But he had ten points. He had nine assists. Don't get me wrong. Um, Did not he went make four, one three. No, he went four fourteen. He Ooh. shot twenty eight percent. He went zero for four from three. He made both his free throws, and then like don't get me wrong, he contributed in other ways: seven boards, nine assists. But when you're playing in a team as complete as the Suns and team that's like clearly going to send someone like, like Chris Paul, who's like eight time first team All Defense. Exactly, a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, and you're like, okay, like, and I'd say a top three leader in the NBA. Yeah, and I think the biggest problem with the the Bucks is like when they're not getting their shot, they don't adjust. Like when they're not getting their spot, so like if your three's not falling, probably don't take nine more threes. You know what I mean? Like, well, uh, I mean, I think that's another thing that we should talk about because I think that the Bucks, in a way, are reverting right back to the Bucks that lost to the Heat last year agreed. in the playoffs. So, um, I have an interesting point. The so because what I mean by that is that Budenholzer didn't make any fucking adjustments. Do you know how many pick and rolls with Chris Paul the Suns ran in Game One? It no. was insane. It was pretty much the only fucking thing they did. They ran forty three of them, and the Bucks switched on every single one of them. There was not a single pick and roll that they did not switch on, not even one. So Drew Holiday was on cr- guarding Chris Paul at that point. Mike Budenholzer make some fucking adjustments. Oh my god. And so after and after the game he's literally just like saying he's like he's like we just need to get the 50-50 balls. We need to get the 50-50 balls. What? No, you guys need to make some fucking adjustments. Giannis had 17 boards in game 1. Like yeah, what are exactly. you talking what about? What are you talking about 50-50 balls? Like just absolute insanity and like you know what's in so you insane bar- about They barely got out rebounded. He's an idiot. And and dude, the Suns, dude, they just set the tone right from the get-go. They play so much more aggressively than the Bucks play. Yeah, they, they they they're just what I and what I find so incredibly impressive is how they can play with urgency while still maintaining control of the ball, and I think that that's largely due to Chris Paul. Yeah, they they have one of the highest paces in the NBA, but it's also such a controlled urgency, which I think is so impressive. At first, okay, hear me out, guys. This is going to sound like an extremely hot take. The way that Chris Paul is currently managing the offense for the Suns is comparable to the way that Tom Brady manages the offense. For football games now am i saying that chris paul is the tom brady of the nba no i'm not saying that however the way that he's managing this game is so controlled and relaxed like a veteran that when you're under control sports in a way you know they all boil down to the same thing the less the other team has the ball the higher chances you're gonna win and chris paul 
doesn't turn the ball over. We know who's coaching. He doesn't turn the ball over. You know, you're going to win if your guy doesn't make any fucking mistakes. And so, you know, and, th- and that's just what Chris Paul does. Yeah, you know? and you even brought this up earlier. Like, we were talking about this. It's like, like no disrespect to Monty Williams. Monty Williams is a good coach. But like, he makes adjustments, all that. Like, he, you know, even when Chris was out, they were winning. Um, but we know who's coaching that team. Dude, like, Chris Paul is making Monty Williams look like fucking John Wooden. Yeah, and it's like, and, and don't get me wrong. Monty Williams is a very good coach, but because like it's, it's not even close. If Chris Paul is is even at seventy five percent of what he is now, absolutely not. It's not even a close. You know, I and don't get me wrong. Giannis had that dope LeBron like chase down block that um, I believe that was on Mikhail Bridges. Uh, I think uh, don't quote me on that, but that that was Filthy. only the real flash of aggressiveness that I saw from the Bucks in Game One. And you know, they I don't think they they might have led a little bit in the beginning of the game. Uh, but other than that, the Suns outscored him in every corner or quarter. Exactly. And so um, and and then and then and then in game two, like like, let's get into the game two. So like, so Giannis drops forty two points after he he's still hurt. Everyone knows this. Like he's still hurt. He had twelve boards, four assists, three blocks. You know his plus minus was the only positive plus minus in their starting lineup. The only one. He had a plus three. PJ had a negative five, negative one for Brooke, negative 15 for Chris, and negative three for Drew. And it's the same thing for Drew. Seven of 21, one for three of th- from three. And, you know, like three boards, seven assists, you know. like And then, again, Chris Middleton, five of 16, one of six from three. Like six boards, eight assists, two steals. And at first I was like, wow, they're just playing like absolute shit. But when you go to the advanced statistics, like over the last four games, Chris Middleton has a... A offensive has an offensive rating of 116.3, and over the last four games, Drew Holiday has a uh, offensive rating of 115.5. Take away the last, the the first, the last two games of the you know Hawks Bucks series, and let's do it. Also, the Bucks have lost game one in every series, but exactly. um, but they also lost game two, and then they also <laughs> lost game two. And here's the thing: is Drew Holiday's offensive rating went down by. Uh, like I think seven points. It's it went from one fifteen to one oh seven, and then Yeesh. Chris Middleton's went from almost one seventeen to one oh nine. That's yeah, that's the highest. Not what you want. The highest see. offensive rating out right now is from Jeff Teague, and that's only because he's playing ten minutes a game. That's that's not what's gonna win you finals, dude. And yeah. here's my thing: is like I wanted to be like these guys are just playing like shit. But if you're saying that. They weren't two games ago. They were playing really well two games ago. Well, you know, when Giannis went down, I thought that they were big time fucked. Well, they adjusted. And that's the thing. And that when they made those adjustments, kind of what I was saying a few minutes ago, hey, that actually worked pretty well. They've catered every aspect of this team around Giannis. And I get it. Giannis is a freak. He is the Greek freak. He is an animal. But what was what you guys were doing at the end of the Hawks series was working. And why, you know, why stray away from that? Yeah, I don't it, really... it's a serious issue when your second best shooter in game two is Pat Connaughton. That's a big issue. He played, Pat Connaughton played 34 minutes. Did, oh, I didn't even know he played that he much. He played 34 minutes. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's, no, no. Like, Bro, he looks like he works at Jiffy Lube, my guy. Absolutely. 100%. And like, I just don't see this changing for the Bucks. It's going to be the same shit. Every year, dude, I actually where we just, just run I, it back, and it's like, unless we, oh, I'm sorry, I, guys. I, I actually just got my oil changed a couple weeks ago, and the guy that changed my oil. It was Pat. Yeah, it was probably Pat. It was Pat Connaughton. Yeah, yeah it's know. his part-time job. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it's going to be the same shit every year, and dude, it, it's like, bro, like, you can't just like, oh, we'll go get like a couple of good shooters. It can't just keep being fucking just a couple of good shooters. Everyone says that. They just need some shooters. They just need some shooters. You need a game-changing all-star. You need someone that comes in, can drop. And I'm not going to put Trey Young out there because he's not a trade candidate, but like a Trey Young, an offensive spark plug. Like, you can't just, like, that's what it takes. And, like, and, and you also do need to follow, like, uh, some basketball fundamentals. Yeah, and, 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 like, dude, unless you go get someone like Shy Guy Kawhi, my guy, like, it's not going to... What do you see happening so different that they sign someone? It's like, oh, it's dude, LeBron and Anthony Davis lost. Literally. How do you think Chris Middleton and Giannis 
And you're like, this is the, this is it. Yeah, this is, this is the answer. You still have to play the West every year. You know this. So, you don't have to play the East all year, dude. You gotta go to the playoffs. And you gotta play the West, and you know that's gonna happen. I don't get why you don't focus on that. You don't look at any of the teams in the West. It's fucking stupid. This team's just too deep. You, this team's too deep to be making uh, mistakes off. What's scary about the Suns is they have guys off the bench like Mikhail Bridges that'll go off for 27 points like dude, he did tonight. and he's a defensive stopper. He's shooting like 37%. Or do, do you shot 40% from three this year? Yeah. 40%. It, exactly. In a third year. And he's probably the seventh he's, or eighth guy to come off the bench. No, he's he's actually a starter right now, and he's very good. But like, here's the thing is he's probably making like $5 million. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably making five million dollars. Well, they're probably gonna campaigns make him probably eight hundred k. Yeah, like I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, this is you know speculative, and we'll talk about this in the future. But these guys are probably going to be needing some big contracts pretty soon, based on the way they're playing. Uh, but you know, DeAndre Ayton wasn't quite as dominant in the paint in game two, but Jay Crowder picked up the slack and got ten rebounds. That's what Jay Crowder's. He's like a Draymond Light. Yeah, he just you does know, whatever ever anyone else is. Yeah, doing. He, he just does. And, uh, you know, occasionally Jay Crowder, I bet one game this series, he'll probably hit four or five threes. Yeah, he'll probably go yeah. off for like 20 points. Yeah, because th- that's what he does. And once again in game two, Chris Paul and Devin Booker pretty much did whatever they wanted to again. Um, so, all right, let us know what you guys think is going to be happening in the rest of the series. Do you guys think that the Bucks are going to pick it up? Or do you think the Bucks are going to continue stinking up the, the room like they are right now? Not even uh, a Bucks fan. I'm gonna lose my mind over it. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's, it's not a definition it's, of insanity. It's, uh, it, it's not looking good right now, but you know, it's only game two, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. Let us know what you think. Uh, tweet at us. Hit us up on Instagram or even our TikTok at Armchair Pods, and listen to our shit on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and stitcher because that is something that i guess people listen to as well yes please listen to our shit yes yes all right uh thank you very much for watching uh good luck bucks you guys are gonna need it